Shadow's House continuing in the maze. Um, still a great, still a great episode. Um, really love. I'm really loving the character di- dynamics between everybody. Um, both like the main core trio, um, Amilico and Sean and Rum. They're they're all just so adorable together. I really like the, their genuine friendship. And uh, I'm kind of liking this developing friendship between Lou and Ricky as well. Their interactions are pretty adorable. Laugh out loud for me. And then also, I just am loving John. Like, he might be my favorite character, you guys. I mean, he's definitely the, you know, most flamboyant shadow master that we've come across so far. And, you know, obviously we've gotten insights into what he's trying to achieve. As I think last episode, you know, he's talking about becoming the king of shadows and and Mm -hmm. wanting to take Kate's hand as, as his queen. So... He uh, he's definitely a unique individual to say the least. He makes for a good addition to the trio that he's you like, just mentioned, mm-hmm. Taylor. He's like the most exciting out of the Shadow Masters for me. So. Mm-hmm. And yeah. I also I want to give a shout out to Rom because like I feel like she had a lot of character development this episode. Like we actually see her being capable and like uh like contributing a mm-hmm. lot. And so mm-hmm. I got I got to apologize because I was shitting on her so much during this whole season. <laughs> but now it's like wow, okay, well you actually you can do stuff. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I like the fact brand. that they're all, they're kind of all evenly matched. Like, they're all bringing something to the table. And I really like the fact that, like, although Emilico is basically, like, the M- like maybe her and Kate are the MCs of the show, technically, the focus is kind of on all of them, you know? She's not mm-hmm. super strong or super smart or anything, obviously, compared to the rest of them. She's Miss Sunshine, <laughs> kind of a goofball, but she still has her thing she contributes. Yeah, um, no, I, I think Miss Sunshine is, you know, the, the perfect moniker for her, especially in the interaction that we saw between uh, her and Patrick. When mm-hmm. Rum and uh, Amilico come up on Patrick in the in the box, and Patrick wanting nothing to do with them, and Amilico, you know, still kind of extending the olive branch, so to speak, when he get when she gave her the um the sunflower to keep him company mm-hmm. and the the orange slices, which I thought was pretty funny. Her kind of wedging those down the little air hole that he had in his yep. box. Yep, um, for sure. But man, I can't help but keep on you know drawing the comparisons. I think you know even at the beginning uh, of this season where. You know, I told you guys a lot of comparisons have been made to um, the Promised Neverland. And I think, you know, there is a lot of direct correlations, not only in like the suspense, thriller and kind of psychological side of things. But like Amilico feels a lot like Emma to me, where, you know, she really just tries to see the good in everything and really tries to bring people together. And I can't help but feel there's going to be something that just like absolutely destroys Amilico mm-hmm. coming down the line when she realizes, you know, hey, uh, everything can't always be sunshine and rainbows and going, you know, your way. Yeah, that's interesting. Yeah, because I keep forgetting too, like, because like her character has been so like, like, like happy and cheerful. Like, I forget, like, yeah, that could be an instance later where like something bad just happens. We have to see how mm-hmm. she reacts to it. And, and I feel like Rum kind of knows something more because there was one scene, I think, from this week's episode where. Um, they were kind of talking about, you know, going their separate ways and in some part of the plan where they did pan to rum when they were saying like something of like, oh, we'll all get out of this together. And rum had like a very kind mm-hmm. of I don't know what the word to use for the look on her face was, but kind of like she knew, you know, things yeah. weren't going to kind of work out potentially. Um, mm-hmm. And then they pan to her shadow master, which we have had like no insight or ever heard mm-hmm. the shadow master speak. Mm hmm. Yeah, I'm also kind of curious to see. Um, I wish there was a little bit more context with the shadows that we're seeing from inside the mansion that are watching all of this unfold. There were a couple of times that I had to pause and think, wait, who's Ryan? Wait, who's Dorothy? <laughs> and I, I don't know why. I, again, I'm a little distracted this week, but I just feel like it goes so fast with them. And we have very little context no. to work off with, with those people and yeah. what their places are. And like, especially when they sent that... Um, the crow the, the yeah the, when they sent the shadow or, crow to yeah the word or the crow over there. i mm-hmm. i couldn't figure out like exactly why they sent it of course the message was in their language so i don't know what it said and then i'm still not quite sure where edward fits into all this with his reactions where he just seems like annoyed by them like they're just kinks in his plan when he yeah. should be a doll supposedly. i mean they're, they're definitely trying to flush out more of the like cast system mm-hmm. within the shadow house and I, I think a good point that you bring up that we saw this week with the interactions of like the shadow lords is it very much seems that they have their own kind of favorites mm-hmm. so it makes me kind of think like what is you know kind of at stake here apart from mm-hmm. you know the five dolls and masters passing this debut uh mm-hmm. test um is it something more where you know the shadow lords that we're seeing watching or proctoring the test um, they kind of have, you know, their own bets on things. And if certain people pass or don't pass, that might have an impact on their ranking within the higher uh, echelon of the Shadow House. So 
yeah, it always keeps the brain kind of going of like, all right, what's uh, what's going on here? Yeah. So yeah. kudos, kudos to Shadow's house for that. Uh, I'm just wondering mm-hmm. if there's like any connections between like the people watching and the other shadows, because like it doesn't seem like there's any like direct like it doesn't even seem like they're all related or anything. So like you don't know doesn't... why like people are biased against who or whatever. It just seems like they just feel like like uh, Milko and Ramar are gonna be failing just because I guess ability, but it seems like. They thought about it from the start, so yeah, I don't know. It it feels like the Hunger Games to me. <laughs> yeah, like I don't know if you yeah. guys ever saw that, but David, like what you were saying, where they where they don't feel connected, but they have their favorites and stuff like that. It's almost like they got like some sort of like pamphlet of the characters and got attached to some of them ahead of time. I know it wasn't like that, but that's just the feeling I get. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think it'll also be interesting to see. Um, I think we're starting to see more and more that all of these shadow like lords and and masters and everything kind of have their different abilities with the soot. And so mm-hmm. I don't know if that's just something that's, you know, a, a trait of their personality types that's manifesting in those abilities. Like, you know, earlier in the episodes, we saw John kind of compartmentalize the soot to blow himself out of the box. And then um, some of the shadow lords, one specifically was like controlling the dolls on the map when he was watching them like through the magnifying glass and everything or through the uh, binoculars, excuse me. So that's another thing that I'm kind of interested in is like, how does that also potentially play into like where people stand in terms of their ability to manipulate this uh, shadow power? Mm-hmm. But yeah, not yeah. not a lot of answers this week i don't know <laughs> not think. at all um more just like character development and relationship building i think i wonder how much longer we're going to be in this maze for do we know how many episodes are out actually or how many of the episodes are going to be of this i think season? it's a 13 episode season okay so we're at what like eight or nine eight yeah so we're getting there i would say one two probably two episodes more I feel like yeah it's a one or two think. I'm just, I'm just thinking too of how like, like it sounds like they gotta find out some way to make a miracle pass. I don't see her like failing this test. I don't know what's gonna happen with mm-hmm. John, just cause like his his clothes are all dirty and like they kept making a big deal mm-hmm. of that. So are they gonna mm-hmm. be able to fix that, or is like are we just gonna? Is that gonna be a surprise like where John and Sean ends up being the one that not passing? Oh, God, oh, I hope that'd not. be kind of wild. I would be so devastated like, if they're, that's they're the case. At it this episode, so. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I feel like yeah, one of the trio definitely doesn't have to pass because like with Ricky and Lou, you know, it is good seeing their kind of characters really come to the forefront. Mm-hmm. Um, but they're just so strong and stacked. I think it's almost kind of a given at this point that they're going to be OK. And mm-hmm. it really is that trio that, you know, is trying to band together and, and keep everybody's spirits high that unfortunately, with what we've kind of seen a little bit behind the curtains of this darkness of the series somebody's somebody's got to lose and i think edward specifically has always said that you know his real kind of worth is riding on not everybody passing you know he Mm -hmm. had that i think that was either this week's episode or the week before we hear he's really upset Mm -hmm. that nobody had yet failed this Mm -hmm. test so he's really trying his damnedest to uh to make somebody face the music he probably thinks like his worth as a judge is is like like strict quality control so like if he passed someone and they don't and they end up like not being like not being good quality later it makes him look bad yeah and i was just gonna say too it just it feels like rum like it's like she's like the most obvious to not pass it it's like well then it sounds makes sounds like well she she should pass then because it'd be too obvious to fail her and not anyone else so i just probably just it's just Hmm. a feeling man i feel it's like it's like john and sean like are like the one like that the show is like hinting at that it's not gonna pass yeah I kind of feel like it's going to be a red herring, though. I really do. I feel like there's going to be like some shocking decision or we really still don't know what they're being graded off of. Like, we we don't know. I I feel like we don't know yet who it's going to be. Or maybe it will be a a Milico that doesn't pass. And maybe that's critical to the plot line. You know what I mean? Maybe what she goes through, like maybe she doesn't get destroyed and what she goes through afterward helps move the story along. I don't know. Although, I don't know. I probably not. Yeah. I don't know. We'll just have to see. I still loving it though. It's definitely the show I saved um, for the absolutely last one to watch of the week because it's the one I look forward to the most. <laughs> this, this episode wasn't uh, as creepy as some of the other ones, but still really good. Mm-hmm.